Do you like little pictures that you need to hold really close to your eyes to see clearly? Maybe you like wide pictures where you can actually see the things to the left and right of your subject. Or maybe you're a square, or a bigger square. Whatever your preferred dimensions, instant photography has a size for you. Today, we're gonna break down your options. The kind of photography that would become part of the human being. Press a button and have the picture. Welcome to In An Instant. My name is Ben, and today's instant breakdown guides you through all the instant film formats currently available. Once upon a time, integral film shooters were limited to a Polaroid square canvas, and then came Kodak, and then Polaroid sued Kodak, but Kodak had licensed their film to Fuji, and Polaroid released Polaroid Spectra, and then Polaroid went away, and then they came back, and there's a lot to think about, but I've thought a lot about it, so hopefully this helps you out. First things first, Let's see your options. You've got the Polaroid 8x10, the classic square Polaroid, the smaller Fuji Instax square, the Instax wide, and the Instax mini. Up until, oh, I don't know, like a few minutes ago, there was also Polaroid Spectra format, which died a death that infuriated mobs of fanatics, but I've got a different video for that situation. Don't worry about it, guys, I got you. Every format has a unique set of price points, hardware, benefits, and drawbacks. These are the metrics we will use to judge these little pictures. Let's start with the classic. Polaroid's 3.1 by 3.1 inch square photograph. The original integral film that started it all. The film takes 10 to 15 minutes to develop, can be unstable depending on the climate you're shooting in, and the frequency with which stuff just like happens to your shots that you didn't anticipate is much higher than back in the day. But they're getting better, like much better. For some, this is the artist's creed. The inconsistency is not a knock, but rather a benefit, because the beauty of instant photography is in the unexpected, going with the flow, embracing imperfection. But to some, this all sounds nice until you like actually price it out. Polaroid has three distinct types of square film, I-Type, 600, and SX-70. All the same dimensions, and theoretically all the same color science, depending on the batch. I-Type is for use only in their newer cameras and does not contain a battery because the cameras have a battery. 600 is for use in vintage cameras or modern cameras. And SX-70 is only for use with original Polaroid cameras that used SX-70 film, which have a lower ISO. I-Type film is $16 per pack, while 600 and SX-70 film is $19 a pack. Because the Impossible Project had to reinvent the wheel, they were unable to produce film as thin as the original Polaroid stock. So you only get eight shots per pack instead of 10. That's $2 a shot with iType and 240 with 600 or SX-70 film. There are ways to reduce costs by buying in bulk and utilizing Polaroid's loyalty program, but it's still pricey. Because of it, I kind of look at Polaroid as the hobbyist choice, people dedicated to the brand, someone who is using instant cameras for more artistic reasons than say, busting the camera out at a party, blasting away, not thinking about it, just being like, absolutely getting blackout drunk. A tremendous benefit of Polaroid film is the hardware. You've got almost 50 years of cameras to choose from and you can get them for as low as five bucks free. You might have one right now. Or if you're really into the craft, you could spend a couple hundred on a top of the line SLR. Really sweet glass. The camera options you have at your disposal absolutely trump anything Fuji and third party sellers have to offer in terms of quantity. The autofocus and viewfinders alone on Polaroid cameras make them more fun for me to shoot with than Fuji's. But at the end of the day, the camera's only a small initial investment, so you have to consider what you're spending on film. To sum it up, around 240 a shot, hardware, five out of five cameras, drawbacks, reliability and accuracy, and benefits, definitely the larger classic size and artistic value. Now, let's flip the script. Polaroid is the top of the price charts, but if you wanna spend as little as possible and just wanna mess around with instant film for funsies, which we support, of course, we have to talk about Fuji's Instax Minis. This micro film is two and a half inches tall by 1.8 inches wide. You could almost fit two of them into one Polaroid just by pure surface area. And please don't check me on that math because it's definitely not right. Instax minis have been a major factor in the instant film resurgence because they're easy to work with, inexpensive, have a robust array of camera options, have a lot of variations, and are really just fun little things. But they are little things. This amount of photograph is simply not for everyone. I like to shoot with them at parties when I've done so much alcohol as that a shot of a foot, or at least I think it's a foot, doesn't break the bank, but they sort of lack the imprint and power of a 
grand old Polaroid. A single pack, which does include 10 shots, is $8. That's 80 cents a shot. And if you're actually gonna use it a bunch, you can get a five pack for 32 bucks. That's more like 60 cents a shot. Because of its popularity, the camera options are also attractive. Very attractive. Lomography makes beautiful glass lens, museum quality cameras for the minis. And Fuji options are extensive, colorful, and pretty cheap. Even Leica has their name on one. And we love that brand name. Bring back the chart, please. Price around 60 cents a shot. Hardware, four out of five cameras. Drawbacks, size, and benefits, it's cheap and has the superior Fuji film stock. On that topic, what Fuji has that Polaroid Originals is still working toward is almost impeccable color science, consistency, and sharpness. Fuji has 30 plus years on their belt in the instant game, and their film quality reflects that. Even on something as tiny as an Instax Mini, you can resolve remarkable detail. Another interesting distinction is that Fuji film stocks across the board are 800 ISO, meaning they are more sensitive to light and thus can be used a bit more flexibly in lower light situations than Polaroids. Fuji has reported great sales in this market and that led them to expand their line to the Instax Square. This is the same height as an Instax Mini, but is wider. To some, this still feels a little too small. I often wish Fuji could release a Polaroid size square film without getting their asses sued again by Polaroid, but it's still a good compromise if you love the look. Like the Instax Mini, the price is also attractive, bordering on Goo Goo Gaga Hot. Their twin packs containing 20 exposures are $18. That's 90 cents a shot, still more than 60% cheaper than where Polaroid is at right now. The only drawback of the Instax Square is that because it's so new, there are limited hardware options. In fact, only four cameras can even shoot Instax Square. Fuji makes two of them, the SQ6 and SQ10. They're kind of expensive, $80 and $140 respectively, and their lenses leave something to be desired. Lomography makes two really sharp cameras for the square format that are priced similarly, so there's really no cheapo option for this film yet. Chart, please. Price, 90 cents a shot. Hardware, one out of five cameras. Drawbacks, the aforementioned camera options, and the size is still pretty small. Benefits, the Fuji film stock, and it has the classic square aspect ratio, most commonly associated with instant photography that most people desire, probably, maybe, maybe, I don't know. Perhaps the greatest compromise of size is the biggest Instax format, the Instax wide. The overall dimensions of the Instax wide film is actually the same as a Polaroid. It is, however, the same height as the other Instax formats. This horizontal latitude makes the Instax wide a very unique and special option in the Instax world, especially in the wake of Polaroid discontinuing Spectra, their wide format. Obviously, you can shoot Instax mini in a landscape orientation, but the nice big canvas of wide film, you finally have some real estate and scale that isn't present with the square and minis. This stock has been around since 1998 actually, but only somewhat recently re-entered the US market. A four pack is about 37 bucks, once more around 90 cents a shot. But also like the Instax Square, they are limited with camera options. Only seven exist and only four of those were released in the last 10 years. The lowest end camera option is the 2009 Fuji 210 at around 70 bucks. But even so in the long run, if you're deciding between Polaroid and the Instax system and money is like the main thing, Going wide will save you money. Chart time. Price, around 90 cents a shot. Hardware, two out of five cameras. Drawbacks, there are no glass lens cameras below $700 for what would otherwise be the most ideal format to shoot sharply with. And benefits, the size and the Fujifilm stock. Finally, the most niche option, the Polaroid 8x10. Unlike the historic 8x10 Polaroids of the past, these are essentially gigantic integral film sheets, meaning they are rolled like the little guys to spread the chemistry to develop the photo. This is a very specialized product that may not exist forever. Polaroid currently sells 10 shot packs for $180 a pop. The cameras required are also far more expensive and necessitate more technical expertise than any of the other film formats. I'm leaving it off the now famous chart because of those reasons. But if you want to venture into the large format world, you can achieve spectacular images with it. I just want to say that despite the challenge and price of shooting with Polaroid film, there's something truly special about what's going on there. 
And in sticking with them, you're supporting scientists, engineers, and artists who are fighting to keep the original format alive. It's a relatively small group of people in the Netherlands cranking out film at the last surviving Polaroid factory in the world. This is why the price is so high. And those are the dedicated people you're supporting. Whereas with Fuji, it's a faceless corporate conglomerate. Whether or not any of that matters to you is your thing. But as much as I've described Polaroid shortcomings, I just wanna make sure you know I think their film produces uniquely beautiful results, not possible on Instax, and they absolutely continue to improve. And that's it for now. These are your formats. Choose wisely or choose them all. I support you either way. I love you and I'm in love with you. Thank you for watching In An Instant. Go ahead and bludgeon that subscribe button with a curtain rod. Stay tuned for more reviews, breakdowns, and all things instant. Bye.